And welcome back to more Broken Sword with me, Demon Wolf, and my food. Because I will be eaten, and I don't care. Who listens? Or not listen. Nah, right, we left off talking to Mr. Lazy here. Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. They didn't budge. I really need to start working out. The gates were made of solid, age-blackened wood. You know, Google Pops are good, warm or cold. Better warm, though. Tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. Mm. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. Oh, what about this? Dammit. Food bar and lunge. The farmer's craggy face was set in a mask of aesthetic appreciation. His feet were set in a pair of manure caked boots. Gates were made. Okay. Car trick. No. Go this way. Of course not. As per usual in these point and click games, you're going to be looking at every little digit on the screen to see what the frick you have to pull or click or do a somersault onto, do a backflip kick and make it work. You say anything else? Hi, it's me again. So I see. What now? Does this tool mean anything to you? You already showed me that and I wasn't impressed. Is this wire intended to be used as a snare? That's right. Do you recognize the name on this card? I can't read that little... What do you make of this matchbook? Seems ordinary enough to me. Have you any use for this towel? Whatever gave you that idea? Oh dear, oh dear me, no. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, but I wouldn't trust him. His eyes are too close together. Would you like to shake my hand? What is this? I don't do that male bond and stuff. What do you make of this tissue? That's a sorry sight to wave about in public. Does this false note... You're a circus... I have to go now. Hey, McGuire. What? Oh, what is this? What do you think this wire could be used for? Stealing cars. There's only one problem. The local policeman? No. Nobody in Lochman has got a car. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. 
I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marne would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. All right, Fitzgerald. You sneaky son of a monkey. Me and you need to have a talk. Mr. Fitzgerald? McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgment, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came My to see me early this morning. You? Said he was leaving. A little of it. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Deal Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet! Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No! Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Logmarn gem. Big Red! Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been runned over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. They're all a lovely bunch of people they are, aren't they? I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Hey, McGuire. Oh, what? God. He's here already. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy cat. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. Maybe the package fell somewhere out of sight. See you later. Okay. What's this? Oh, this is some weird cryptic puzzle as it opens this. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. Uh, what are those? The 
plastic cover had been smashed and broken away, revealing a switch. Uh, oh, what is this? Oh. If first you'd actually succeed, succeed, sorry. Try, 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 and try, and try, and try, and try, and try, and try. Come on. Something work at least. And try, no. And try, and fail. Hey, McGuire. Anything else to say, McGuire? Give me your hand. Get lost. What is this tip? Nothing. Uh. Have you ever. No. What do you make? Hey, that's what. That old win. You're pretty cool, mister. Do you recognize. No, sir. I. Ever heard of Thomas Merlin? No. What do you. I told you. I told you. See you later, kid. Okay. Hmm. I'm thinking there might have been something dropped around here, because he was over here. Huh. Huh. Advance a bit. Let's see if anyone has any else to say. So I... Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew. The idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. What? Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right. But what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard. It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. Progress. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. Hmm. Anything we can use? I don't think so. I pushed my fingers into the narrow crack. It went back several inches into the rock. There was a narrow crack between two of the stones where the centuries-old mortar had crumbled. Smack with this. There we go. Whoa, that's longer than I thought. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. There we go. Progress. There we go. This is just the... Yeah. Okay, I thought of that somewhere else.
It was a rusted piece of iron, maybe part of a plow or something. Yeah, Mr. Goat. Oh, crap! That, that's terrifying. The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. Uh, what? Did I, what? Did I do something right? Hopefully doesn't skip through cutscenes again. That was annoying last time. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. Oh. I placed my fingers in the five impressions left by the fallen stone. It was weird. They fit perfectly. The five... Hmm. Oh, really? I squeezed the towel as hard as I could, but it was barely damp. I placed my fingers and thumb into the hole. Okay, nothing happened there. Okay, let's check this out over here. I ain't know what I'd do. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. So, uh, plaster of Paris. Plaster. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. Oh, good. Where is it? There it is. Need to look closer because I can't actually click that. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. Okay, now we just need to make it wet. Will this work? No. Right. Now we have a conundrum. Can this make this wet? Hmm. No. We need water. <laughs> There's no water in that, which is a bummer, because that would have been really handy to have. Alright, so we're heading down. We need to make the towel damp. I don't even we order a drink. Accidentally spill it, wipe it up with a towel. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. May I have another beer, please? Certainly, sir. Same again? Yeah, please. How is this stuff made? That's the secret of the master brewer, sir. Each barrel is lovingly manhandled in time honored fashion, suspended on skillfully tied ropes of the finest hemp, lowered into the cellar, utilizing the forces of original gravity, like manner. From heaven. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I could fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my idea, is it? It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? 
The white whiskers on the bartender's flushed face were like garlands on a Christmas tree. The resemblance ended there. The top of his head was too slick and shiny to act as a perch for a Christmas angel. It was an electrical plug attached to the glass washer. It was an electric glass washer. It looked even older than the barman. First, let's, you know, unplug it. No! No! I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. What, what? What? I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. No! No! Careful! I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous. But I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man. On the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Oh, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. Hooray, hooray, into the basement we give. What the hell's this? Oh, whoa, that scared me. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. I don't really see anything. Heard the grating of metal. Okay. It's outside. There we go. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor. Way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Uh, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Is this man, is his of face course. Like a Thank you. Like, look at his face. Just look at his face. He's just like, I'm <laughs> like a gorilla. <laughs> So now I, I could see. Yeah, I, I spotted Mr. Leary's flashlight easily. I like I really need it, but oh, I haven't had Then I noticed a flash of light. Something sparkling beneath the open trap door. Yeah. The gem. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire. I want you to keep this to yourself. No problem oh. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could. For sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari. Alright. I'll look at this in a while. God, got the jam. That goes with the tripod. No, I have to figure out what to do with them. Is there anything else down here? There is. It was a rusty faucet. So where exactly is the pipe? The faucet creaked, 
coughed and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. Yeah, oh, yummy. Anyway, I don't do this. <coughs> I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. Let's turn that off. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could. Well, I don't see anything else down here. The fuse box is up by its side. We don't really have anything to fix the fuse box. I should try shutting the flashlight on it. Climb, my friend, climb. I would never be able to do this. I get heights. <laughs> the trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. There it is. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud, then silence. <laughs> Look how the door opens after, you know, he finishes talking. See? You think we got a flashlight, eh? Mont... Fokken. Foshkin. I don't know how to say that word. It's a word. That evening, back in Paris. As they would say, you know me. No bug. Just a 20-year-old piece of gum. Yummy. Are you ever going to get up? Like, ever. There you go. I got a message. Play it. There you go. Not putting that on again. That was annoying. I had messages waiting to be played. You have three messages. Hey, Collard. It's me, your favorite editor. Uh, guess what? I'm going to give you a second chance. I need somebody to write the TV column. Pays lousy, so what's new? If you're interested, drop by the office. In fact, drop by the office anyway. We have to talk, Nico. That story of yours I spiked. It won't go away. You've made some dangerous enemies out there. Hey, Nico, it's your old pal. I mean, your new pal, George. Whoa, Ireland. <laughs> it's a whole different country. And I got some amazing news for you. Gem of a story, in fact. Oh, oh. Gotta go. Yeah, fella here's got a drink lined up for me. See you tomorrow, Nico. Slonsha. Yep, only here for a day and I'm speaking the lingo like a local. Son of Zell Coulard, this is Amel de Carchon. I wanted to thank you for being so understanding when... Come to lunch, why don't you? Tomorrow. I might have more news. There's a Monsieur Merlon coming to see me this evening. He says he knows why Pierre was murdered. Oh, shit. In fact, he'll be here shortly. I shall let you know what he says. Goodbye, dear girl. Till tomorrow. Merlin? Oh, my God. God. Merlin's the killer. I better get over there and mourn her now. When it came to being two-faced, Imelda was up there with the best. I owed her nothing. But I couldn't just let her die. It, okay. Just going to be there I arrived to find the Palais Royal courtyard deserted. I only hoped that I'd beaten the assassin here. I had to warn Imelda before it was too late. Just your average mod. It was held in place by wires. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't art after all. Maybe it was a cell phone transmitter. People say, what's the point of modern art? I say, isn't it obvious? Anyway, we'll save this at... Um, ow, 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 put me out there, ow. I hurt me. I. Oh, I wish I save it as.
Stop ticking. Paris. Confirm. Alright then, see you soon.